Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can email me directly at benji at alcoleenterprises.com. On the line with us today, we have Peter Locke. We're going to be discussing his new book, Mickey the Martian. Well, technically, we're going to be discussing his series of books, uh, all under the title Mickey the Martian, and then subtitles from there. Now, all of the books will be available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And Peter was brought to People of Distinction today by some of the best movers in the business, Letra Press Publishing. If you have a book that you'd like moved, you got to move it through Letra Press. You can find them at letrapress.com. And guys, I'm so excited to have Peter on the line with us today because, you know, as I stated, it's a series of books. I mean, it's actually a culmination of seven books that Peter has has been able to construct. And, you know, they're children's books, but they're all geared around central themes. And really, it's all discussing and showcasing the importance of reading and learning and the development of imagination, which, you know... We've all been there and we all understand the importance of it. But what's fantastic about the way Peter has been able to develop it is it's it's all not only is it learning and showing the importance of it, but it's constructed in such a fun way in such a journey that really you just love to take with your children. If you're a teacher to, to, to show your students, if you're a parent, a fun journey to take with your kids that way. And, you know, Peter is very wonderful in bringing and constructing this. So without further ado, we have Peter here on the line with us. Peter, first and foremost, man, thank you so much for being a guest with us on People of Distinction. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you, and thank you for inviting me onto the show. Likewise, yeah, we're, I mean, we're absolutely excited to have you here and discuss this mountain of work that you've brought with us today. Now, let's just jump right in, Peter. Talk to us. Let, let's start off, of course, the first book, Mickey the Martian, Mickey Arrives. Tell us about that book and really tell us about each of the books briefly and kind of give us a little bit of a, of a synopsis of them, please. Okay, well, Mickey Arrives, as you say, is Mickey arriving on Earth. Now, he has many special talents, of which shape-changing is one, along with um, mind control and teleportation. So, because he can shape-change, he chooses to come to Earth as a young boy. When he lands, he meets eight-year-old twins, Billy and Jilly Watson, Mm -hmm. and with all of his Martian superpowers, they go off on a series of adventures together in this world and beyond and in time and space. Now, when Mickey arrives and he finds himself some accommodation, the very next day, there's a bank robbery. And with his powers, they chase the bank robbers and help bring them to justice. Wonderful. It's great. No, wonderful. I mean, so, you know, again, we have a lot, a lot to cover. So that's Mickey arrives and, you know, kind of going into into it that way and how he establishes friends when he arrives and, you know, the journey uh, uh, that he faces and kind of goes through there. Talk to us briefly, and again, you don't have to go through each individual title, but there's seven all together. So can there you tell us, tell us a little bit about some of the other ones, Peter? Yes, surely. Uh, second one, uh, they go to a fair. And uh, amongst other things, they teach a crooked stall holder a lesson. Uh, they go on some rides, and then there is an escaped tiger, which they capture and bring back safely to his owner. The third book is called uh, The Ghost in the House. And in this one, the trio go to a haunted house. They meet a ghost. They help the ghost. And they solve a hundred-year-old murder mystery. In the fourth one, The King and the Castle, They go to visit a castle in the UK and there is a silly ghost of a king there 
who takes the mickey out of all of the guests um, when they're there. The boys and uh, Jilly can see the ghost, but of course the parents can't, and uh, they're all the time wondering why the boys are, and the girl are being so silly and laughing, and they don't understand they're laughing at the antics of this uh, this ghost. <laughs> and uh, the next one, they go to a TV studio in this country. Um, Billy wins a competition, and uh, the prize is to go to the TV studio where they are producing a program about Mars. Um, Billy gets to go on the set and drive a spaceship. Jilly meets her heartthrob, who is the guy, uh, the star of the show. And afterwards, they say to Mickey, what did you think of this? And Mickey says, what a load of rubbish. It's nothing at all like Mars. <laughs> and they say to him, yeah, but, you know, you've been there. We haven't. How do we know what Mars is like? So he takes them to Mars. And it is nothing like you might imagine it is. In in all of the stories that I have done, I've tried to make the characters quirky and to make things as you would not imagine them to be. And and uh, if anybody from NASA were to read the books and <laughs> be what I think Mars is like, uh, I think they'd probably tear their hair out. <laughs> You know, what's what's great about hearing you talk, Peter, about this journey is each one of these stories sound like it's it's all very unique, right? And really the only correlation that ties each of these is, of course, Mickey the Martian and his friends that he travels with uh, across each. But what's fantastic is there's seven individual books here, seven individual journeys that these characters go on. And I think that there is so much to be gained by that. Um, and it's fantastic on how you constructed it. Uh, Peter, talk to us about now, the, the title of the book, of course, very straightforward, Mickey the Martian. We know that we're following the main character, Mickey, who happens to be a Martian, right, in the journeys that he goes on. Now, in terms of the inspiration behind that, I mean, well, A, for I mean, I guess it's going to be a multi-part question, but first and foremost, did you always see yourself as a writer? I mean, was this something that you always wanted to do, and how did the idea for Mickey the Martian, the series, kind of come to fruition well when i was very young maybe six something like that uh, i had an imagination and teachers used to call me out in front of the class to tell stories which must have had a beginning a middle and an end i assume because <laughs> everybody's very happy with them um but my chosen career was uh, as a television cameraman and I spent 50 years in that career, uh, basically telling other people's stories. And I retired two years ago, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to write my own stories. Why not? Mm -hmm. um, what sort of stories am I going to tell? And I thought, well, children's stories, using my imagination, is the easiest thing, the best thing that I can do, because it suits my character. Absolutely. And I thought, well, if I go for a Martian, then nobody can contradict me because it's my imagination. <laughs> nobody can really say, no, Martians don't really do that. Uh, so I came up with Mickey the Martian, and, and that's really how it started. So... Um, and I wrote the stories very, very quickly. I, I wrote a story in maybe two days, three days, something like that at the most. It took me longer to type them than it did to actually write them. <laughs> you know, so, what, what's wonderful about that is, you know, being a creative person myself, I always love hearing how that creative spark happened, right? And how that creative journey manifested itself. And, 
you know, hearing you talk about how it was longer to type the stories than it was to create them. I mean, it obviously shows a lot of passion that you brought to the projects, right? Um, and that's the reason why it was so easy to construct them is because it was something that you were so interested in. And you talk about your imagination. And again, the underlying theme here is the importance of imagination and the importance of for children and really just people, regardless of age, the importance of having an imagination that way to, you know, expand beyond the parameters of reality uh, uh, that way I think is so fantastic and it was wonderful to to hear you talk about. So thank you for elaborating on that for us, Peter. And guys, once again, here on the line with Peter Locke discussing Mickey the Martian, the series of books, again, available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Now, the next question that I, I really wanted to go into, Peter, is talking about, you know, kind of bringing it back down, you know, into the realistic circumstances here. I mean, this is, of course, you know, we're discussing your imagination and your inspiration behind creating the stories and, you know, how it started at a very young age where you basically were performing these stories in front of the class. And that was kind of, you know, your jumping off point there. Um, and now after your career, kind of getting back involved in that. But why did you feel a story of this magnitude needed to be written? Why was it important for you to write these children books and to showcase them to the masses? Well, I, in this country, um, reading has become uh, something that is not done as often as it ought to be done. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the United States, but people have wandered away from that. And I wanted to write something which was um, interesting enough to try to bring children and their imagination back into the fold. So that is, is why uh, in the books anyway, there are no pictures so it is purely to bring children's imagination, help them to, A, to learn to read because they're interested in what is in the book, but B, also to imagine what those characters are like and what those characters are doing. And um, the other thing is that all of the books are highly moral, if you like, in their way. Uh, there is nothing untoward in any of the books. N there is nobody in any way in any of them um, is a bad character, if you like. I mean, they do overcome evil, but uh, there aren't any nasty characters in the thing, really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I that was one of the things I was interested in. So that uh, because sometimes in this day and age, um, you find that uh, children, I don't know, they, they don't use an imagination. They sit in front of a television set and that's what their imagination is. It, it is what they see. Right. Um, so I, I'm quite interested that they they should be educated in in their use of using their imagination yeah no absolutely you know and one thing that i really like about what you just said peter is you know a you know the fact that your book doesn't have any pictures in it uh, it really kind of allows them to create the images themselves you know what's wonderful about language and really about art in general is it's all about interpretation and the way I see something or a particular art may not be the same way somebody else does. And w what I love about it is the fact that you're allowing the children to be able to make those judgments themselves and really craft their imagination on how they see their story developing that way, um, which is commendable and beautiful at the same time. But then also another thing that you talked about was, of course, these characters face adversity and they face characters that could be viewed as, you know, the bad guy or the, the evil character. But 
you don't want to make him in, in how you stated is you don't really have evil characters or someone that is that evil to that to that point. And what I what I love about that is, you know, I think so often based upon what children see on television and in movies today is it really rushes their growth. Right. I mean, children grow up so fast and, I, you know, I remember being younger and I was always a big reader when I was younger and fictional narratives, of course. Um, I always loved the Goosebumps series, right? I, I, I absolutely was yeah. was fascinated yeah. with those books and R.L. Stein and, and things that way. And, and of course, as I started to get a little bit older, Edgar Allan Poe, I was a big fan of and, you know, really kind of dark fictional things that way. But what I loved so much about it is, again, it was so it was always just fictional narratives that my imagination was allowed to kind of run with and i was able to just be a kid and just get lost in these worlds that way in the construct in the confines of what these authors created and of course edgar Allan poe is a little darker of course but that was you know i was a little bit older by that point and into my teenage years i wasn't so much a, a, a child anymore but i think that's so important that underlying message of the importance of imagination and developing that and having fun while at the same time learning to read. Um, yeah. and, that, and that's fantastic on how you've been able to develop that for us, Peter. Now, the next question that I, I really want to go into as we're starting to kind of tidy things up here is, all right, we have seven books. <laughs> Each of those books are, are revolving around a different journey and a different uh, message, of course. So maybe we're not focusing on one particular message about the book, about any individual book itself. And I think we've already started to cover this message. But just in case, if there's anything left that we really want to put out there, if there's one underlying message that you really want our audience here at People of Distinction to be able to pull from this interview, Peter, that they really have to know about you as an artist, your books that you've constructed, that you really want your audience members to gather from this series, what would that underlying message be? Well, I think one thing that um, has been said uh, about the books is that they have um, a certain old-fashioned value about them. Mm -hmm. um, and the trio always overcome adversity and defeat evil and generally win the day. So I, I think that's important absolutely yeah i mean that that message of hope you know against all odds and you know facing adversity and, and continuing to fight and push through that's fantastic definitely a universal message that we can easily get behind you know here at people of distinction but our, our human family uh even more so guys again Finishing up, just, you know, we were talking here on the line with Peter Locke discussing Mickey the Martian series, available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, but not only there, guys, you also can go directly to Peter's website and find all of the books there and be able to purchase it, as well as find more information on Peter himself, and that website is going to be MickeyTheMartian.com, and just for clarification on the spelling, Mickey is spelled M I. K K E E the Martian dot com. And like I said, you'll you'll be able to find more information on the books, more information on Peter Locke himself and purchase them directly from there. Guys, Peter is is an amazing and accomplished author and he has a lot of other books, um, you know, other books that he's written and also in the process of writing that haven't yet been published. So we kind of refrain from from discussing that. But definitely go to his website, follow him on there. There's going to be a lot more coming out and you definitely will not be disappointed. Peter, thank you so much for being a guest with us on People of Distinction and bringing these books to our table. We truly appreciated it. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>